Okay, welcome back, ladies and gentle jammers, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your edification Chupacabra man, Larry the Chupacabra, and we're here today to talk about something that I've been kind of curious about for a long time, for like two-ish years, probably, um, and that is, is it possible to easily create WebM videos using Premiere Pro and uh, Adobe Media Encoder, both uh, from Adobe, uh, to create WebM videos for use on like websites, maybe ultra compressed videos to put up on Facebook or like Twitter or other social media platforms. And it would turn out that yes, it is possible, but unfortunately not because Adobe uh, has allowed you to, which makes it a really kind of slow and arduous process that you have to just wait for the video to encode. Um, you can also, if you don't really want to mess around with uh, plugins for Premiere Pro from um, an open source developer, then uh, you can also find a lot of solutions like Miro Video Converter for the Mac, which is available in the App Store, which, funny enough, uh, was recommended to me by the App Store right after I upgraded to OSX El Capitan. Um, word to the wise, though, if you're watching this before you have upgraded your Mac, if you use a Mac at home, uh, wait a little while before upgrading to El Capitan or Windows 10. They are still horsing up several functions and features in the Adobe products, specifically detailing audio. Just, just so you know. It's not a big deal, but if you use audio a lot, if you edit a lot of audio in either, like, Premiere or Audition, you might be up shit creek without a paddle for a little while. So, in order to create videos in the WebM format, and if you're not familiar with the WebM format, we'll get to that in a second, you can download a plugin from the Fnordware.com website, and uh, whoever the guy is that runs this place and creates these open source plugins makes stuff for like uh, PNG export plugins to make your PNGs more efficient for like Photoshop. And this person's been around for a while. So you just download the plugin off of this website. I will link it in the description, obviously. And there is an installer available for the Mac, which will automatically put the plugin into the correct folder and everything and it comes with a, like, getting started guide that they were nice enough to write for everybody. And then they've also got one for Windows. I cannot verify whether or not Windows will automatically install the plugin for you, but if you are curious, there are plenty of tutorials out there. I would demo it for you on my um, Windows PC, but I don't have anything Adobe-related installed on there, unfortunately. So once you've got it installed, that's it. You can just open up Premiere. You might need to restart it first, though, but you can just open up Premiere or um, Adobe Media Encoder. It works for both. I've already exported a couple of samples for you guys, but that's all you got to do, and then you can get started exporting stuff once you've got it edited. So, for the purposes of, like, argument and showing you guys this evening, um, it's Sunday, so I'm going to be a little belchy. I'm having a brewski. I have uh, trimmed down to like a minute-ish one of my Bloodborne videos, which you can see roughly the quality up here. And we're just going to hit Command or Control M to open up our export media window. And all you have to do to select it as WebM is just go up to the Formats pull-down menu here at the top and then find WebM near the bottom. And that's all you've got to do. Now, it is a little bit more complicated than that, and we'll jump down here and start talking about that. So, the primary thing that really makes up WebM as a video codec is, the whole idea is you're going to make really ultra-small video files that you can put out on the web so that people can, you know, watch your cool stuff without having to, you know, wait and download a one gig file or to load it from, like, uh, YouTube or whatever. It's just for a small, like, say, banner video on your website where it's like, Hi, we're uh, the web SEO jockeys, and we want to jockey your website's uh, um, hindquarters to make it more efficient for the intertubes. 
Stuff like that, it's really small, it loads really fast, and it doesn't lose out on too much quality doing so compared with, say, trying to embed a bunch of animated GIFs. So down here, the primary thing you want to look at is the Codex Setting tab right here. And I'm actually going to close these other tabs just because we don't really need them right now. So there's two main codecs that you can use to craft a WebM file. There's the older and less efficient VP8 codec. It won't give you quite the same level of quality as the newer VP9 codec, but it will take a substantially um, shorter time to export your videos. Um, VP9, especially because this plugin wasn't developed by Adobe themselves, it's not very efficient and it takes like 10 times longer for me personally to export my videos. So for the sake of argument, we're gonna, we're gonna select VP8 first and then these bitrate methods of encoding are pretty standard. There's constant quality, constrained quality, um, constraint bitrate and variable bitrate. From top to bottom, uh, this is the least quality, this is the highest quality at the bottom. Um, variable bitrate, the best way to think about that is it gives the video wiggle room so that if uh, there's a lot of movement going on, like when my character in my YouTube video here moves around, during that moment of motion, things aren't gonna get pixely and smeared, they'll look crisp and natural as if you were playing the game with me. Um, constrained quality or constrained bitrate, on the other hand, um, those lock the bitrate to a specific size so the file doesn't get very much bigger than it is estimating down here at the bottom of the screen. Um, you can also select um, constrained quality. It's kind of like a uh, constant bitrate, but you can set the bitrate where you'd normally have to select like uh, constrained bitrate here, which doesn't really give you any options to mess with your quality. We're going to do like variable bitrate, and the default is a thousand for a WebM video. And I just want to give you a picture of how small that is. Normally, when I export a video, I give it a variable bitrate between 10,000 and 12,000 for a 60 FPS video. So, a thousand, just a thousand, is like a tenth of the normal quality that you would normally see from one of Larry's beautiful videos with my beautiful voice. Uh, so, you know, it's not as great, but if you need a small video file, then you've got it. I mean, that's, that's what it's for, especially for use on the web. Um, Two-pass video encoding is basically, um, it does two runs. The first run, it looks at the overall scene quality of the video, and the second run, it takes a look at the darker portions of the video so that it can keep all of those fine little details, like uh, if we zoom in, you can see there's like a lattice network here in this archway. There's like some sort of weird decorative piece in this game up in those shadowy portions. If I do a two pass on this video, which I will probably have to remember to do now, you'll be able to see all of that stuff where otherwise some of it might get lost. So it's always nice to two pass encoding if you need it. If not, I mean, you're not going to see a huge difference unless there's a lot of dark portions in your scene, but there are in this one. I mean, there's, there's shadows and there's sinister and stuff. Um, if we were to choose VP9, we'd have the option of messing with these other two settings down here. Sampling. These sampling settings, basically, the lower down, the higher the numbers. The more the computer looks at each individual detail in each, like, quadrant, of your video, it breaks it up into little bricks. Um, it looks at them a few more times than it would normally, so that it can try to maintain as much quality as possible. But note, uh, for VP9, the higher this number goes, it almost gets exponentially slower in encoding stuff, so it might be better for you guys at home to just stick to 420. Um, you can go as low as 12 bit, uh, bit depth, but again, unless you know what you're doing using these, just stick with 8-bit, 420, to pass encoding, VP8, and you should be good to go. And then the last thing over here is we need to talk about audio. So, funny enough, WebM, even though it's an older codec that's been updated, uh, it's pretty robust for what it can do. 
Like it can handle a bit rate of up to 512 for like vocal audio from, you know, you and me saying words where um, like your normal audio codec level for like YouTube is about 320 to 380. So I'm going to leave this one at 320. I mean, I've already pre-rendered a sample, but I'm just going through the motions for you guys. So what is this codec thing here in in the audio, Mr. Chupacabra? Well, Vorbis is the old codec for um, audio, and you can you can have it like uh, prioritize bitrate versus quality. I always select bitrate because that's a little bit more definitive, and you usually know like what bitrate you're supposed to target for like YouTube or what's the other one, Vimeo or Facebook or whatever. They've all got lots of documentation. Um, Quality is really relative to, to like what technology you use to record a piece of audio to like what you encoded it with. So I always stick with the bitrate. Um, Vorbis is more supported by a lot of different things. Like, for example, VLC does not properly support Opus, but Opus, if you can use it, is much more efficient. It can hold much better quality. Nothing you could probably discern but it's just better, it gets a little bit smaller when you have, like, massive files. But for the most part, you probably want to stick with Vorbis, because, like, the newer stuff, this VP9 technology, it's not always supported by everybody, which is weird, because, like, you know, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, they all support WebM, everyone's been using WebM recently, but it's like the rest of the industry just hasn't caught up or given a shit yet. So, um, word to the wise, you can use, uh, WebM to encode, like, a full-size video, but it's gonna take a honking decade in order to, you know, get it to that, like, big size. So I'm gonna, I would dump this down to, like, a 30 FPS bitrate. 29.97 is just the American broadcast, um, 30 FPS bitrate. Don't ask me why they, they ended up with an odd number. It has something to do with the technology they use to broadcast. I, I don't remember it off the top of my head. And uh, I would probably put this to like 1280 by 720. Because like this isn't really designed to be handled by or for like really big honking videos. They're supposed to be like small, cute little web videos that replace animated GIFs and stuff. And then you'd use like use previews and you'd go from there. And then this would give you a file about roughly the size of 11 megabytes. If I were to compare this to my preset for um, MP4, that like increases it by like eight times to like 89 megabytes. So it's pretty big. So once you export it and you can also mess around with this, like just throwing a file here into uh, let's just throw one of my other videos into, not Miro, but the Media Encoder. So let's just throw ba the Battlefront video in here. You can just click here, and you have access to all the same export settings that you did in Premiere. So you can do all the same stuff here. But I've already exported a couple of samples for you guys that I have open. So... Here on the right is the super compressed WebM format. Let's have a little look. So I'm playing in Bloodborne. I'm running around grabbing stuff and chitter chatting. Um, I don't actually have audio because, again, the Opus codec doesn't behave itself when used inside of uh, VLC Media Player for whatever reason. So I'm running around and you can see like parts of it kind of look blurry, they kind of look mushy. They aren't as sharp, but when I stop, you do get some of that sharpness back for a brief moment. But overall, for this size, this overall, like, video size that you're seeing right now, this doesn't behave too badly. Like, this would be like a 480p video quality on YouTube, and this video is only about 11 megabytes, so if you have, like, a really shitty bandwidth and you really gotta get a video up onto Facebook to communicate with your fans, with your clients, with potential customers or whatever you have for like a, like say you put on a sale or something, this would be a quick and dirty way to do it. You could also use this to make like a video uh, for your website that you can put it up on like the front page that auto plays that doesn't lag them out. All sorts of stuff. So let's compare that with the full quality YouTube ready 
MP4 video with 10,000 kilobits per second to 12,000 kilobits per second bitrate. And you can see it's a, it's a much larger file size, but it's much better quality. The lighting is better. The overall detailing is better. You can make out all the, like the finer details when you move around. When you move around, it doesn't get all smeary and blurry and pixely. So it's not a, a, a surefire solution to large video size problems. MP4 has just been tried and true by the and tried and tested by the industry for a while. But this one works okay for if you have like a specific purpose for it. Um. Why was I investigating it? Well, I want to put some more videos up on my own without sending them to associates, colleagues, and siblings' houses to upload faster because I'm just in a more rural area right now. Um, so this would be an easy way for me to do a fan video where I'm not so worried about the video quality because I'm communicating with a set group of fans on their requests. And then I can use the full quality for everything else, like over here. So... Again, you can get this, uh, this plug-in for free at fnordware.com slash webm. We also have a distribution on GitHub that you can mess with. And this download comes with a free guide. It comes with a little PDF that'll tell you most, if not even more, information than I probably gave you. I just booted it up and fucked around with it and learned how to use it on the fly. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining me for another Chupacabra Tutorials video. If this helped you out, do me a favor, like, subscribe, maybe comment if you have any notes about using WebMs or what you think is the best usage for them as opposed to putting up like a website or on social media. And maybe check out my uh, gaming channel linked on the main channel page in the sidebar. And other than that, um, well, I guess let me know if you have any questions. I'm not the most knowledgeable person on this video codec. Um, you should probably consult the guidebook PDF that comes with the plugin, but I will give it a shot. So until next time, do that subscribe thing and the likes and stuff, because that helps me out a ton. I'll catch you later. Bye, everyone.